I personally think the biggest story that we, our generation is part of is just beginning to unfold now and has to do with the deep transformation of business and society. And um, that's, I want to, uh, to talk a little bit about that and then situate kind of the, uh, the theory you in that. And um, I have been, uh, the past few months, going around in companies, NGOs, communities, multilateral organizations to present a single slide. Just, you know, a way of sense-making of what really is it that's going on right now? Because that's the first thing we should, you know, uh, talk about. And um, to my, very much to my surprise, I want to start with that, and very much to my surprise, I got extremely little pushback on the basic premise of the slide, which is that we are, in fact, in a huge um, uh, transformat transformational change story. Uh, and the question was more about the how, and how to move on, but not the uh, weather. We have a whole bunch of, and we see that every day uh, uh, playing out in the newspaper, crisis situations, climate, energy, poverty, water, health, food, financial security crisis, Education, of course, all of that is a leadership crisis. And of course, as many people say, it's a crisis really of our civilization, the way we work and live. So what is the bigger uh, picture here? And what I'm, so the slide I'm going to show you is that I believe that the bigger picture really has to do, that has to do with the systemic root causes, has a lot essentially to do with how we think and how we organize uh, business and society, particularly the relationship between business and society. The way we produce and consume, which is kind of the topic of our panel. What I think we can observe on the second stage is that uh, it uh, has been working for a while, at least in some places, but today we are hitting the wall because we deal with global externalities and because um, um, on a global level, uh, this system even uh, uh, is not um, uh, going to work. So what we see is a challenge in about every system uh, to uh, what I call kind of the 3.0 economy or an ecosystem economy that is different to the social market economy in one respect, mainly, which is that it allows us to innovate at the scale of the whole system. And the breakdown at the end of the 2.0 system is nowhere more clear than in Copenhagen and then in Wall Street lobbying in Washington for preventing effective financial regulation from happening. So 2.0 special interest groups that, you know, deal with each other on an abstract societal level, um, leading to no good very often uh, and leading to really a... a uh, paralysis of the system. And what we need is a 3.0 system that uh, allows us to innovate at the scale of the whole ecosystem, be that a city, be that the, the sustainable food system, be that other spaces. And this evolution, if you look at these three, you could say it's an evolution from ego system awareness, 1.0, to stakeholder awareness, 2.0, to ecosystem awareness, 3.0. And that's the leadership challenge we have. So what I would like to talk about and give an example of is what really does it take, what leadership does it take to move to a 3.0 economy that is based on an ecosystem awareness among all stakeholders in a system. Unless you connect to the the deeper level of awareness that I refer to as open will, which really deals with the deeper sense of our own life's um, journey um, and the work we really want to do, uh, nothing really happens. And what, um, what I'm most surprised by today is how much you can do in terms of using, so this morning we had John Milton with kind of silence in nature, kind of he's one of the a key, a really uh, uh, a most influential guides in that work. So using silence in nature, using contemplative deep reflection, uh, reflection practices, I'm very surprised today across all cultures, if you work with particularly uh, emerging younger leaders, 
how great the interest is in using these practices in order to filter out the noise and to listen to what is it that's really wanting to emerge in a system, what is it, what's emerging in my own life and in my own work, and what is it that we can do together uh, to have an impact. How do you then, many of us, so in the prototyping, it's really um, about the frontline experience. So in health, it would be, so what happens between the nurses, physicians, with the mothers and patients and so on, it's that relationship. In the institutionalizing, you want to bring in the leaders of the larger system. And you want to uh, link what's happening on a micro level with the meso and macro level. And um, so this kind of from the, um, you want to really look at the whole value chain, kind of all the way, kind of in the case of the food lab, from the farmers to the consumers, and create conditions of listening and learning uh, uh, together. Uh, and you want, for example, in a, in a health system, you want to create conditions where the minister and the leaders of the ministries are actually walking in the shoes of the frontline people. So what leadership does it take to move uh, to, uh, to innovate at this at, at an system level or ecosystem level as a whole kind of at the scale of the whole system so to not only in small pockets but to innovate at the scale of the whole system and what I said what I tried to say basically is what it takes is a leadership journey that moves the stakeholders in the system from ego to ecosystem awareness by way of walking in each other's shoes and so on, linking them not only on a mind, open mind level, but also on a, a open heart and open will level, and I showed small examples of that, in order to then collectively sense and actualize kind of emerging future possibilities. So that's basically what, what I'm uh, trying to propose. Why is that not happening more, right? And that's, that's kind of was the other framing question here. Well, what is it that we need to get, what is getting into the way? What, what, the old leadership behavior we need to get rid of. And that's kind of just to uh, end with the three things that I think prevent time and again from this to happening more naturally is um, the voice of judgment, which is blocking the access to the open mind. Um, it is the voice of cynicism, so all, emotion, all moves of emotionally distancing ourselves from a situation, from other stakeholders, that is preventing us to access really the open heart quality that we all have as human beings. And lastly, of course, the voice of fear, right, in every institution on earth, kind of, uh, which in most institutions on earth is a big factor, and in fact, Dealing with fear and tapping into the capacity to let go and let come is the essence of leadership. The word leadership goes back to the Indo-European word root light, which says to, to cross a threshold to a new territory, or it also means to die. So this capacity to let go in order to then let come, to move into a new world, I think is at the heart of leadership today. Thank you.